Hey, welcome back to The Struggle is Real, a webisode for the uh, educatorsroom.com. Uh, my name is Linda Darcy, and I will be your host today. I'll be taking care of you today. Um, and uh, the, the idea of our podcast here is to take a look at how struggles in our professional life impact our personal life and vice versa. A lot of times, as I've said before, I'll stop saying it pretty soon, but we're still only in episode three, so you're going to have to bear with me. Um, a lot of times, teachers, although we may... Um, we may complain and kvetch to each other about what's going on in our classroom or with our kids. Um, we don't necessarily really dig deep and share the real personal and professional struggles that we're having. Uh, and so this is uh, the idea of the webcast is to give you a forum to do so. Um, and again, as I said, I have said before, I have had the unfortunate experience of having a lot go wrong in my life in the last two years. And so I have a pretty good foundation to talk about this, uh, from. So that's our goal here is to talk about the struggles to, uh, get some kind of, uh, empathetic ring going, uh, an empathetic support group among teachers so that we realize, look, we are all going through similar struggles and yet they are unique to each and every person. So that's our goal. And so my hope is to not just be me talking to the camera about myself, uh, but I want to get some input and feedback from you guys. So there's two ways we can do this. The first is via email. You can email me at ldarcy, that's L-D-A-R-C-Y, at theeducatorsroom.com. Or call me on Google Voice and leave a message, and that number is 860-245-8178. Um, we'd love to hear from you, and it is as anonymous as you would like it to be. So today we're going to talk about, you know, I talked about last episode about being unemployed, and I am currently back in the classroom. Um, and so I wanted to talk about the struggle of getting back in the classroom after being out for a while. And one of the things really that um, I think about you know, my situation is a little different, but I think about the thousands of teachers who go out on maternity leave and then come back. And that comes with that kind of emotional, I don't want to say baggage because that sounds negative, but that emotional um, umbilical cord that is still going to your house and how difficult and how um, just how hard that has to be to leave your baby to come in to go to work. But mama's got to earn the bacon, right? So I'd love to hear from you if, uh, if you have gone through that experience and what kind of struggle that was like. Again, the idea is that we can share this information so that we know that we're not alone. So I, as I said, mine was a little bit different situation. I was unemployed. I got laid off from an administrative position um, and took a while before I, I got back into the classroom. And so when I walked back into the classroom, I had been out for six years. I uh, was an administrator, so I was out of the classroom for four and then was unemployed. All right, so maybe five years. But I was out for a while before I went back in. And uh, the irony is my position was um, almost always, my position was as a talent developer. So my job was to provide professional learning opportunities to teachers so they could hone their craft. I spent four years of my professional career telling teachers how to teach. So now i got to go back in the classroom. It's time to put up or shut up, right? I have talked the talk. Can I walk the walk? And there was a lot of anxiety before I went back in knowing that. I was like, okay, now it's the time to put up or shut up. Am I really as good of a teacher as I sound? I sure can talk the talk. Uh, and one of the things that I knew was going to be the most difficult was, you know, again, I had spent so much time preaching about um, differentiated instruction. And yes, it's hard, but it's important. And is it, yes, it's hard, but it's not impossible. And the ba it is worth the bang for the buck. And so going back in the classroom, being well aware, I would have very mixed classes um, and that I would have to uh, do better at differentiating. Because when I left the classroom, there was still a trend. I'm a French and Spanish teacher. So as language teachers, we don't always get all the kids. A lot of times kids with IEPs or 504s or who uh, have reading issues, maybe not um, to the extent of a learning disability, um, are pulled out of our classes. And so we often have, um, I'm not going to say the top half, but it's the top 80%. And, I, and you know, I'll, I admit that. And I know that there's a difference there between having 100% of the kids. But having said that, um, it was still going to be difficult. There was still going to be differentiating that has to go on. Um, one of the things in a world language that's incredibly important is being able to speak and participating in class. But that doesn't necessarily honor the needs of an introvert. And yet it's important 
for the job. So there's one example of where differentiating in a world language class is particularly difficult. You have to get the kids talking without humiliation, without um, adding more stress than school already is on the kid. So one of the things that, uh, as I said, I spent a lot of time teaching teachers how to teach, but I was also, you know what, I, you know, as much as I said, I have become more humble in this experience of being unemployed, I will also say that, you know, I was a gosh darn teacher, a good teacher. I was a great teacher. Um, my strength is definitely making connections with the kids, but I was also a great instructor and giving feedback. And I, and, you know, people I worked with recognized me personally as a good teacher, but also professionally knew that what I did was uh, what's best for kids and has really always been my mantra. So then I got to go back in the classroom. And no matter how much I always knew teaching was the hardest part, there's a big difference when you've been out of the classroom. All administrators, I'm telling you, all administrators should have to go back into the classroom for a while and have 100% responsibility for the kids because, um, you know, I spend a lot of time wondering, have I lost my touch? Like, it, it isn't easy. And my memory of it was, I mean, I love teaching. So my memory of it was all the good stuff, was all the good stuff. And so now I'm going into a situation where, you know, it's mid-year. I'm going into a class that has had a series of subs, has had a lot of disruption in their lives, and they are not necessarily all ready to learn. And so uh, walking into that situation, again, is kind of a blow to the ego. And I ended up going back to one of the schools where I taught. So now the expectations are even higher. The people knew me when I was at the top of my game, when I was at my peak, and now I'm coming in and I'm rusty. And I went to, I said to a colleague yesterday, I'm like, I think I lost my touch. And luckily, uh, she, she, didn't, um, she didn't actually empathize. Well, I guess she did empathize because she said, no kidding, right? You'll get it back. And then she talked about how she walked into her class today and, and, and just said to the kids, what happened? What happened over the weekend? You weren't like this on Friday. Why are you like this today? And I have to admit that that was comforting that, you know, to remember that we all go through those hard times and that there are times that we just want to bang our head against the wall because kids are kids. And so, uh, you know, and here in New England, we have a saying that if you don't like the weather, wait a minute. It's the same thing with kids. If you don't like their behavior, just wait a minute because it's going to change on the good side or the bad side. So if things are going well, don't don't get too used to it because it's only going to be the drop of a hat or a shift of the wind and that they're going to be their 13-year-old selves again. And that's what they do. I know I used to say to, and probably will say again to kids with, who, when they were just getting on my last nerve, I would say, look, you are acting like a 13-year-old and you are very, very good at it. The issue is that right now I can't take it. You're not doing anything wrong. It's me, not you. But, oh my gosh. Um... So again, talking about my experience of going back into the classroom and not necessarily knowing, it goes to, I was unemployed for two years, more or less. And I had that lack of confidence, that blow to the ego and the blow to my sense of confidence that came with being unemployed. And so going back in and wondering, can I really do this again? What happened? Did, the, did, did I lose the magic? Is the magic gone? Um, and I, I'm not going to lie, I'm still struggling with that. I don't think it's gone because I've had glimmers. I've had the glimpses of those wonderful times when I'm just, when everything's clicking and I love my job and I love the kids. But it's hard to get back there, you know. Uh, and and it's actually just now that I realize a lot of that has to do with just remembering the good stuff from the years of teaching. I was in the classroom for 15 years. Um, and... I'm not going to say loved every minute of it, but certainly loved the majority of it. Um, so what are some of the difficulties that you may have had? I tell you, for me, it is, uh, luckily I still have pacing. I still uh, am able to plan the right amount for the right amount of time. Um, it's definitely in the area of classroom management right now that I am, I hate to use the word struggling, um, but that is a challenge for me. And a lot of it comes from what I did for the four years I was an administrator. And I'm going to get to that in a different episode. But um, uh, I used to preach about community building rather than discipline. Um, very easy to say and not as easy to do. So, again, I have learned compassion. I have learned humility. 
and these lessons just keep on coming. So, again, sorry, I have to look at my notes, and I haven't figured out how to do it without it being insanely obvious. So that's really my conversation for today is just talking about um, what it's like to go back into the classroom after being out for so long. And I want to hear from you. Did you take a hiatus? Did you take a hiatus not just for maternity leave but to raise your kids? And then you can't come back. What's different? What happens? What, you know, where, what was your experience like being out of the classroom and then going back in? So please – Please, I'm begging you. Um, either email me at ldarcy, that's L-D-A-R-C-Y, at theeducatorsroom.com, or you can call and leave the voicemail with Google Voice at 860-245-8178. I uh, want to hear from you, want to share your stories, want to commiserate with you, and uh, want to, again, create this nice little support group so we can all save thousands of dollars on therapy. Um, next episode is going to be kind of continuing on with this, uh, idea of being out of the classroom and then back in. One of my struggles is, and has always been, and many teachers have a hard time with trying to figure out where is the line between handling some kind of discipline issue in my classroom, just between me and the kids. And when is the time to bring it out and talk to the administration and bring the administration in. So that's the teaser for next time. That will be what we talk about. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. And uh, I guess that's all I got for today. Thank you, and that's all I got. <laughs>